so good to be with you. I am Jake Reese. I'm the market development manager for the U.S. Pacific region here at doTERRA. And I am joined by these two incredible women. We have Lucinda Martin here and Olivia Tai. And you are all in for a treat as we will have the opportunity to get to know them better, their doTERRA journey and what you're all coming here for, their Founders Club 2.0 journey. These are two of our U.S. Founders 2.0. Um, and, and as they haven't had an opportunity to jump in and push towards founders, you're going to get to hear a lot of the miracles and a lot of the strategy behind their journey in this process. So I'm going to take some time to introduce these two in just a bit from now. But we also want to take a moment to get to know all of you that are tuning in all throughout the world and the nation. So please take a moment to enter in the chat where you're connecting with us from. Connection is a beautiful thing, isn't it? And we're so blessed to have technology to have a chance to connect and to commune. I would love to hear where you're from. I'm tuning in here from doTERRA Corporate here in Pleasant Grove, Utah. And Olivia, where are you tuning in from? I am tuning in from Miami, Florida. <laughs> Miami, Florida. How's the weather looking down there? <laughs> it is nice and humid and warm all year round. Nice. I love it. And how about you, Lucinda? I'm from Pennsylvania. Um, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Wonderful. And it looks like we are joined by, wow, we have someone joining from Brazil. Daniela, welcome from Brazil. Hey. All over. Dillingham, Alaska. We have more from Brazil, uh, Arizona, Michigan. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you all. I, I want to just start by giving some brief context and brief background. For those of you that are new to this Founders Club 2.0 opportunity, let me just start by saying this. It is an opportunity of a lifetime. And the more you understand about the blessings and benefit that can come from you and your life and how it will empower you to be able to help serve, bless, and share hope and healing with others, the more you're going to see and have desires to want to know what you can do to continue to move deliberately towards it. This, in quick summation, Sounders Club provides us with an opportunity to our bonus advocates for the community. This particular opportunity is rare. Once in a lifetime, if you will, we have 200 spots available for you. And in order to qualify for one of these 200 spots, basically you need to earn 1,000 points. And there are different ways to earn those points. Lucinda and Olivia are well adverse to, are well, are well versed in these different ways that we're going to get to hear a lot about their understanding with what they did to earn a thousand points to qualify for Founders 2.0. Uh, but as we get into this conversation and we have this discussion, I invite you as you're listening to be mindful of your journey and to be asking the necessary questions you need to understand personally to move forward. Yes, we'll be one resource for you today, but we'll also be providing you with many other resources, even through this chat platform, to help you connect to learning more about the Founders 2.0 opportunity and the process that it provides you to receive a share of all U.S. volume from $1 billion to $2 billion within the U.S. That's huge! And you would get that payout annually. So again, blessings upon blessings here. And without further ado, let me kind of shift gears and take some time to to introduce Olivia and Lucinda. I've had the opportunity to, to chat with both of them already. And these are two incredible women who have much wisdom and experience, compassion, drive and determination. And you're gonna get to hear a little bit about their stories now. So I'd love to start with Olivia actually. If you wouldn't mind just telling us briefly about your doTERRA journey. And we'll go from there and we'll jump over to, to Lucinda shortly after. Hi, everyone. It is so awesome to meet you. My name is Olivia Ty Martinez now. I got married uh, recently. Uh, so my doTERRA journey is um, one that is very common, I've heard. Uh, so I started as a customer. And um, right away, I knew that these oils were different. And when I enrolled, I was still a customer and I was a very dedicated customer. So I went to Pamela Tenemura's house every single day because she told me that she taught classes every day. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go to your house every day and take your classes because I love these oils and I wanna learn all about it. So on the third day, I went to her 
house and she taught a class and at the very end she talked about the business and she mentioned that anybody can do the business so i went home and i thought about it i texted her and i said you said anybody can do the business right and she said yeah anybody and i was like okay so i can do the business and at the time i was still doing music so i was a songwriter a musician i was traveling all around the world performing music and I was like, you know what? This is going to be so interesting and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and try it out. I mean, I was doing many different sponsorships. So I, I was working with different brands and trying to figure out how that was gonna work. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, of course, I had no idea how doTERRA worked. I had never heard of doTERRA before. Um, and she goes, okay, great. All you have to do is upgrade your account and then I'll take it from there. So I went in my account, upgraded it, set up my website, did everything. And uh, Pam goes, I put you in my front line. And I said, what is a front line? <laughs> I had no idea what that was. And so I was like, okay, sure, front line. I don't know what that means, but okay. So I continued to do my LRP every single month for a good two years. And she helps me build. Um, I, I had a gold under me for about two years and i had no idea what that meant i was basically a super elite a glorified elite and i finally went to convention in 2019 and that's when i said you know what this is an amazing company i cannot wait to see where this goes and i was like okay i'm gonna make this happen and then in 2020 i uh pam has filed for like an exception for me to um, participate in Diamond Club for the first time as a barely premiere. I mean, I barely made it to premiere. Okay, everybody. Um, I, I did not actually like legitimately qualify for Diamond Club. I had to like beg to be part of Diamond Club. So I was part of Diamond Club, had um, a horrible first month, I think. And then starting the second month was when the pandemic hit. And that is actually when I started to build my business seriously so i really started my doTERRA business when the pandemic started and shortly after founders 2.0 was was um announced and uh, from there i i started running i was just running and that is that is uh how how i got here <laughs> i love that so because someone a friend of yours And, and helped you get started. You've had an opportunity ever since to get engaged with the products. And then in, in, in the chaos of it all with the pandemic, you're saying, that's when you started to, to push for founders. That's incredible. And I can't wait to circle back to that point of what that journey was like during the pandemic to push for founders 2.0. So thank you so much, Olivia, for that introduction and for sharing with us your, your background with doTERRA. I'd love to take a moment to, to give Lucinda the same opportunity. So Lucinda, would, would you mind just sharing with us briefly your doTERRA journey and your story? Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here and to share my story. I think it's so fun to hear how everybody starts in doTERRA because it's always different. So my sister was the one that originally introduced me to oil. She was like, she's learning about oils and they're amazing. Like I have to come to her class and I would enjoy it. And I was like, yeah, on the way to the class, I told my other sister, I'm like, I'm not going to buy any of that frankincense, like maybe peppermint, that makes sense, but not frankincense. But at the class, the lady who taught the class, Rachel Hoover, my upline, she was like, she was telling everybody how she replaced her medicine cabinet using the top 10 oils or using her oils. And I was like, what? Is that even possible? And then she went on to say how she always enjoyed healthcare and how it was always her dream to be a nurse but she didn't get that far and this was her way to serve others using oils and right away i was like boom lucinda that is for me i knew right away that i wanted to do this business i bought the top 10 kit including frankincense and i went home and i was like i wonder if that is true that you can replace your medicine cabinet with essential oils so we were actually remodeling our bathroom at the time so i took a box and i boxed up everything i had in my cabinet which i had drugs i had herbs i had i wanted to be that kind of person that knows um natural solutions but i never knew where to start or what's what so i packed up my medicine cabinet i put it on a high shelf in a bedroom closet 
And I thought, I will see if that lady was telling me the truth. Well, half a year later, I put the box in my garage, even farther away. And a year later, I ended up throwing most of it out. So that was how I learned that oils are legit and they work and I love them. Um, it took me about half a year till my husband was on board. So from June of 2019 to about January of I forget the dates, but about half a year later after I enrolled, I was ready to rule. Like I was like, yes, I am going to do this. And I started my doTERRA business and it's been a fun journey ever since. Hey, uh, in quoting you, oils are legit. <laughs> I, I love that because you learn <laughs> that by experience, again, because someone reached out and shared with you. So maybe just kind of piggybacking off of that thought, how did you all come to know that Founders Club 2.0 was legit? So talk to us about your Founders 2.0 journey. And, and let's kind of pick up from where we left off with Lucinda and we'll circle back to Olivia on the same question. Sure. So when Founders 2.0 was announced, I was a brand new gold. I had just hit gold for the first time. I had been doing Diamond Club and I hit gold somewhere in Diamond Club. And I was like, really, I could see right away that I was in a really good position for this. I could see that all I needed to go do was go diamond. So what it really looked like is just work my business. I was a little terrified at first, like, because nobody had done this before. And how do we actually go about doing this? So I decided just to work my business a little harder and see what happened. About halfway through the summer of 2020, I started getting goosebumps. I'm like, you know what, Lucinda? I think this is actually going to work. I will be able to make this. And it really comes down to committing. I see people everywhere that are have all the skill sets, all the knowledge, everything it takes. It doesn't take anything but a willing mind and commitment. But I see people who are not willing to commit. And I feel like that's the most important part for Founders 2.0 is committing, like saying, yes, I'm going for this. I'm going to sacrifice and do what it takes and making a plan, being aware of what works and what's going on around you, what others are doing and just running with what you are given. Thank you so much. Same question, Olivia. Tell us a little bit about your Founders 2.0 journey. So when Founders 2.0 was first announced, I remember looking at it and thinking that there is absolutely no way that I, someone like me, would be able to get a thousand points. I really, I legitimately thought that. I mean, oils are legit. And so was this thought of, oh my gosh, a thousand points. How am I supposed to do this? Like I, I just started my business at the start of the pandemic. Well, I started taking it seriously at the start of the pandemic. I just reached silver for the first time in May. And so I, I really didn't know where it was going to go. So I just thought, okay, you know what? This founders thing is probably for people who are already presidential diamond people that we've heard of already, like they're, they're going to get it. And that's, it's, that's awesome. I think that's, that's great. So I just start working my business. I'm like, okay, I'm silver. So I'm going to go for gold. So I'm like, okay, I hit silver for the first time. Then I hit gold for the first time the month after. And I just consistently hit gold um, as the year went on. And then um, I, I, I just started receiving these things. Like, I think it's like every 50 points for founders, they keep on reminding us like, hey, you've got another 50 points, you've got another 50 points. And then six months after I think Founders 2.0 was announced, Christina Bedell was the first founder, which yeah. at the time I was like, oh, who is this person? I've never heard of her before. And I was like, you know what? Maybe there's a chance, maybe I can do this. And I so I, I started uh, kind of, kind of stalking her a little bit. I was like, <laughs> I, I went to every training she spoke at. I went, I listened to her podcast. I went to everything to figure out what the strategy was. What, what, what was I supposed to do next? Because at that point, I had about 400 and something points. So then I started listening and she created a spreadsheet. Um, at the time, the spreadsheet from doTERRA hadn't, hadn't been released. So it was something that she created. So the entire thing was in Spanish. And then I translated it to English and then I started to work the spreadsheet and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm 400 and something points in. All I have to do is hit diamond twice and I would be able to get a thousand points at the point at that point. I was like, okay, how am I going to hit diamond twice? <laughs> that is insane. So I was like, okay, I need to get my team on board. I'm going to help my team rank. 
I'm going to rank, and then we're all going to get this together, and everybody's going to have a thousand points in my team. So we started working this. I started, I translated that spreadsheet, spread it, spread it around, made sure that we were setting up founders uh, strategy sessions with my team, and and we were able to reach reach that goal and now my team is working on founders and everybody it's it's like a win 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 situation all around so that's that's how it went <laughs> thank you so much olivia thanks for sharing that and just maybe a, a quick follow-up question to you that came to mind as you were talking you mentioned early on as you're trying to weigh out the odds of if this is even possible for you is there a chance you said what would you say to all the people right now that are are possibly asking that same question. Is there a chance for me at this point in, in the race? I think that's an awesome thought and an awesome question. I'm sure many people are thinking this. So right before this call, I just had a strategy session with a brand new builder. Uh, she literally started yesterday. <laughs> so um, we were strategizing, figuring out exactly how she would get to first first we're talking about jamaica so first we would have to get to jamaica first right 125 points which by the way is the same way that you're going to get to founders anyway so uh -huh. we were talking about jamaica first and then i was like and after we get you to jamaica we're going to talk about how we're going to get to the next steps so it is very possible and if you haven't noticed we've had a quiet month and a half where no one else was announced as a founder so there are still 191 spots left that's a lot of spots everybody i think there's less than 191 people watching right now so <laughs> everybody who's watching right now can have a spot in founders 2.0 love it so you're saying there's more than a chance this is definitely within reach yes but it is not the lottery so it is definitely yeah. something you you can earn and work towards and and get thank you olivia Next question I'm going to direct first towards Lucinda. And ladies, you both touched on this briefly, but yes, we know that in light of the pandemic and all the implications that that has entailed for you and for everyone, what were some of the challenges or obstacles you faced trying to, to push for this incredible goal during a pandemic? And what did you do to overcome them? Lucinda? So for me, um, I was doing Diamond Club when the pandemic hit. I want to say Diamond Club started in March and things started shutting down like the end of March. And I was just like, how in the world are we going to do this? Because I am in home. Like I primarily reach out to the Amish and Mennonite communities. And I was like, they're very limited in technology. And I was like, I don't know how we're going to do this. I scratched together March. I think I was one requirement short for March, but I made an exception, went into April, and we actually learned to do a little bit of online classes. Um, I use an app called Telegram where we would create a group and teach a class on the group. And we were able to keep going through Diamond Club um, that way for the rest of till June till Diamond Club ended and by then a lot of the people I work with were actually not very scared of anything going on and they were ready for me to come back into their homes so for the rest of 2020 I probably did 50 50 in-home classes and online classes so I felt very blessed in that way I also felt like the pandemic was a wonderful time to build because what other time are people actually worried about their immune systems what other time are they actually realizing that, you know what, maybe I better look for more solutions? Um, when more are they, do they have time on their hands? We had people who were at home for longer. They have time to study and time to read and time to listen to me. I know we love to talk to them about On Guard and how it works with our immune system. And just teaching people the facts that they never knew before was so rewarding. And I always felt like, the pandemic was a blessing like it made so many people wake up and be willing to hear um solutions for us so what i another point that i really want to make is it doesn't help to complain like our circumstances are beyond our control we can't help that everybody gets shut down and in lockdown but we can choose to rise above that we can choose to grow in spite of that and use it as a stepping stone because really that's what i see it as in my business We're able to take such a again complicated past year 
and and find the good in it and push through regardless and help others do the same thing. It's so inspiring. Thank you, Lucinda. Same question, Olivia. Yes, so I think the pandemic really, really helped us to think in a creative way. But at the same time, I started in the pandemic. So that's kind of all I know. And at this point, I'm actually doing the opposite thing where I'm trying to figure out how to build without the internet. <laughs> so I'm doing a lot of traveling. I know I'm tuning in from Miami, Florida, but I actually live in LA and Hawaii. So it's been a very interesting journey because my team is everywhere because of the pandemic. I was able to reach out to people because they were already at home and I was able to get people to the Zoom classes be really creative with all these different types of Zoom classes. And I was messaging hundreds of people a day. I mean, like really hundreds of messages going off every single day. And I, I remember my husband saying, it's five in the morning. Who are you talking to? And I was like, people in other countries. And I was just like going off, going off, going off. And um, I was able to, to just, just, go and a DM and message hundreds of people a day. And then I was sampling at least a hundred samples a month. Um, it was, it was a great time to build. And, um, and, and I don't know if people touch on this, but I'm actually naturally an introvert. So uh, me being an introvert building in the pandemic was actually really kind of awesome because I was able to talk to people um, from my phone, my favorite device, <laughs> and so I was able to talk to people on my phone, on my computer, and um, that's that's really how how it all worked for me. And now I'm now I'm adjusting to building without the pandemic, which is kind of a which is kind of the, the the new challenge for me. Isn't that an interesting twist on this all? And and how both of you in essence were were born in the pandemic when it came to pushing for founders 2.0. So thank you for sharing those experiences and helping us have that paradigm shift of, again, what you're focusing on and what you're determined to do uh, will definitely have huge impact at your results and outcome. So thank you for that. I, I wanted to ask you, and I think you've already hit on a lot of this, but maybe you might shed some extra light on this. If you were to put yourself in the shoes of a brand new builder, someone who was just introduced to the Founders Club 2.0 opportunity, someone who's eager, excited, but probably also a little overwhelmed and uncertain of where to even begin. What would you say to this new person that could give them hope to know how to step forward? What might be a first step? Uh, let me start with Olivia on this one and then we'll have Lucinda follow up on that. So I'm, I'm going to reference the, um, the conversation I had with a new builder yesterday. So shout out to Emily and Debbie, by the way. So we are we are discussing it in a way where I'm like, okay, you want to become a founder or you know, want to become a diamond or whatever it is. Um, I am thinking about it in terms of running, flying, right? So right off the bat, we're thinking about power of three, right? We're thinking about power of three, but not just the first line. We're thinking about power of three all the way down to 1500 because we are aiming for gold, essentially. If you are a new builder and you're trying to reach founders 2.0, 1,000 points, your goal is to get to gold and you'll be able to get 1,000 points, <laughs> essentially. So you want to think about, okay, who are the three people that hopefully don't know each other that you're going to run with first? Because I think about it in, in a traditional business model sense. That's actually where what my background is with entrepreneurship is I've owned a few businesses before. Um, and so I think about it in that way. So it's like, okay, you own a store and you're going to need three people that are leaders to help you run this store. And then they're going to need some good lead leaders below them. And then they are going to need customers, right? That's how a business runs. You need leaders and then capable people, and then you need customers. So that is really how I, I think about how to start and run with a new builder is the power of three. And the power of three is extremely powerful because it sets you up for silver. It sets you up for platinum. It sets you up for so many um, 
of the beautiful ranks that are just below diamond, right? And then that's that's really the foundation of everything. So we do a heavy focus on power of three and that's how we, we start running. Thank you, Olivia. And Lucinda, same question, putting yourself in the shoes of a brand new builder who's excited, but maybe also a little daunted by the task at hand, where would you encourage them to start? Yeah, that is a great question. I say start with committing. First of all, realizing that it's not going to happen by itself. It's not going to happen magically, but you are going to have to do the work. Like Olivia's strategy is wonderful, but I say make sure you are teaching classes. Classes are what are what going to ultimately get you there. So you're going to want to be doing at least an average of two classes a week. I teach primarily in home, so you can do that. Um, make the sacrifices. Like th if there's other things in your life, weed out what is absolutely not serving you and focus. You're going to have to be laser focused on your business and then take it one step at a time. I love how Olivia said, um, taking, starting with the power of three, setting it down in small goals. Like you can't go gold in just boom like that. You have to take it one little step at a time. So talk to your upline, have a plan of what you're going to do every month, put a date on it. It is so powerful to put a date on your goal. Like I'm going to be elite by this month. I'm going to be pioneer by this month. And then I'm going to be silver by that month. So you have a clear vision of what you're working for. And then you're not just floating back and forth, wishy-washy wondering, okay, what am I supposed to do next? No, have it written down all ready for yourself so you can look at it every day and know exactly what you're going to do in the month that you are in. Thank you so much. That, that is beautifully uh, said, Lucinda and Olivia. The chat is full of gratitude and praise for the things that you all are sharing. And it, it brings me back to, to a comment you made earlier, Olivia, that this isn't a lottery. But what this is, is an incredible opportunity. And that as you approach it with intention, commitment, vision, plan, and support, this is very realistic for you. As we're beginning to wrap up this panel, I don't want it to end, uh, but as we're starting to wrap up and come to a close, I can't close without talking a little bit about convention. We have an incredible chance to engage in one of those eras, best platforms and best ways to help not only inspire and educate, but to help build leaders. I have once heard someone say, if you want to build leaders, you get them to convention. So ladies, maybe as a last question here, help us understand what role can preparing people for doTERRA's convention in September play in helping lead these for some Let's start with, with Lucinda. So I'm sorry, you cut out just a tad. I didn't catch the tail end of your question. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so let me repeat that. So what role can helping people prepare for convention play in helping people in their Founders 2.0 journey? So I would say what I'm doing in my team is showing people, sharing a little bit about what I've learned in past conventions and sharing with them how it's going to light their fire, how nothing nothing is going to build their belief faster. I'm a real big one for telling people like you are a solutions provider and you have to own that. You cannot hide in fear, like wondering, is my oil, are my oils actually legit? Do I know what I'm saying? You are a solutions provider. And for myself and my team, I love convention for the fact that they learn the science behind oils. They make get to make connections with so many amazing people. And it's going to just build their belief all the faster, all they can go all the farther, and it will really solidify the fact to themselves that they are a solutions provider. And when you're a solutions provider, customers and people trust you. And when people trust you, that's when your business will grow. It's really built on trust and relationships. So I'm looking forward to convention for that reason, the science and the learning and connection. And I'm super excited to meet everybody there as well. Is it, my, is it my turn? Yes, yes. Sorry, <laughs> okay. sorry if I'm having audio issues. I don't know what's going on. I apologize. No worries. Uh, I, okay, so I would say convention is a 100 
1,000, let's stick with the 1,000 points thing, 1,000% yes, absolutely, you have to go to convention. If you're watching this right now, go to convention. If you don't have your ticket right now, go to convention. Convention is so incredibly vital. I wish I knew this in the two years that I was idle in doTERRA because when I went to convention, I remember Pam telling me, I was like kind of on the fence, like I was like, oh, should I go to convention? What is this? I've never been to a convention that I wasn't performing at. Uh, so I was like, okay, what is what is convention? Why are we going to this thing? And she goes, listen, go to convention and your team will grow by a hundred people per person. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about, Pam? Pam, you're always saying crazy things, Pam. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I had, I went to convention and so did seven of my team members. The following year, my team grew by 800 people. Wow. And I, I'm having goosebumps right now because I remember Pam said, she said, go to a convention and every person that you bring to your team, you're gonna grow by 100 people. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, Pam was right again. <laughs> everything she says comes true and so i was like okay well that now now i know every single year we have to go to convention any event that you can possibly go to with doTERRA that you are qualified for that you're invited for go because it is so incredibly important to understand the company that we work with that we've chosen to partner with if you're watching this it's because you chose you chose to partner with doTERRA and you want to know who you're you're working with and this is by far the best company in the world and the, there's there's no better way than to go to convention and experience that with everyone else who who knows that olivia and lucinda thank you both so much for sharing your genius your hearts and your experience with us we have been filled today again the chat definitely is like that in the words of two or three of our, our friends who have chatted in, wow. <laughs> I think that's a good one word summation. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for your time. Everyone who has joined in, we hope this has been helpful for you. As many have been asking, yes, this is recorded. You will have an opportunity to rewatch it later. If you have questions about convention and or about Founders Club 2.0 and how to stay engaged further, feel free to look at the resources in the chat thread that are coming through. and have fun in this journey. Press forward and enjoy the ride. Thanks, everyone.